Is this just a healthy correction or a major collapse? Let's jump in, jump in and uh, see what the charts have to say in the news today. Markets are down with about 30 minutes left to go. As I always say, watch the momentum into the close. That's how you can kind of gauge what investors are thinking and positioning for. But the Dow down to the lows of the day right now, down about 0.62%, uh, S&P down 0.9%, NASDAQ down 1.13%, Tesla is down 11% with a miss on earnings. Uh, due to a lot of reasons, price cuts, things like that, with trying to gain market share. Um, earnings have been coming in mixed so far across the board. So with more earnings to come, uh, we'll have to see what things look like and uh, how the road ahead uh, is going to look. But what the, what the markets are doing right now is basically repricing in the rate hike. Uh, all of the Fed speakers pretty much unanimously came out and said, we're going to definitely hike. Maybe the last one, but we're hiking in May. Uh, we're also going to stay there longer. We're not going to be cutting. We're not going to be retreating. In fact, we think the economy is fine, is going to be able to absorb this, and we're going to be able to avoid uh, a recession. And of course, uh, the last time we heard that was Ben Bernanke back in 2007 and eight before the market collapsed. So will that happen now? Is this going to be a collapse or are we just repricing to earnings, repricing to uh, interest rate hikes and things like that? And let's take a look at the charts and see what they have to say about all of this right now here's the dow and i've marked out april of 2022 this was the end of march 1st of april in 2022 same point we're at right now had a drop pop and then ultimately the market uh bottomed in october and dropped let's look at what the dow was from that area let's just say on average it was about about a 20 percent drop 19 20 percent uh nasdaq same thing here's april march april here's march april here had a little bit less of a you know, consolidation before the final drop, but ultimately again, bottom, bottoming in October. So let's take a look at what that looked like. And that was a drop of somewhere around, you know, 30%. So that was significant on the NASDAQ. Uh, so the question is, you know, what is it going to look like this time if that happens? Same thing here in the S&P. A um, little bit of price action there, 25% on the S&P, ultimately dropping. So are we going to see that now? Uh, since we are in uh, mid to end of April, and you know what they say, sell in May and go away. And this was basically March through June, had a little bottom at the uh, mid of June, pop up into August, ultimately bottom, bottoming in October. Markets, a lot of times in uh, events like that, will bottom out September, October. Uh, but again, a lot of it's going to depend on what recession looks like. The VIX getting a little bounce as it got down to that 16 level. Haven't seen that level really since back in that was January of 2022 the last time the VIX was at that level uh, so you definitely want to look for a bounce in the VIX right there the Dixie kind of consolidating hanging out the two-year retreating a little bit today and the 10-year retreating a little bit on inflation concerns or uh, recession concerns so you know inflation is receding a little bit the job market is showing some progress inflation showing a little bit of progress job market showing a little bit of progress but there's still plenty of inflation out there to be had Plenty of tightness in the job market. So the Fed's work and job is not done. Here's Bitcoin for the last three years. This is April, uh, middle of April, April 15, 2021. Here is April, 1st of April, 2022. And then now here we are at the 14th of April, uh, where this arrow is 2023. All major hits on this trend line, all major reversals. And we looked at this the other day. And I did say, and I have been saying that it's time for a healthy pullback in Bitcoin. Uh, so is that what this is, or is this a complete reversal? We'll uh, look at the charts here in a second, or the you know some indicators here in a second. But that's a 67% drop. We looked at that. If Bitcoin were to do that, it would bring it back down around that $10,000 level, somewhere around there. So let's take a look at normal retracements, right? So from the bottom of this uh, range in uh, when this bottomed out back in November, Let's see what a retracement would look like. Whoops, wrong indicator. Hang on. There we go. Let's look at the Fibonacci retracement and let's see what we're looking at here. So from the bottom of that level, uh, right now coming up on that 236 line right here, which is right at 27,400. Uh, I think that Bitcoin is going to blow through that. And if it if it gets a little bit of a rest, it's going to work its way down to the two, uh, 382, which would be about 25,000. That's a big level next level for Bitcoin to kind of stop at. It could very well stop here, get a little bounce and reverse, but most likely given the environment we're in, uh, 
you know, with this 100% move, a nice healthy pullback would be in the cards. And that would be the 382 level, a lot of support there uh, and resistance or a lot of resistance there in the past. And then beyond that, you have the 0.5 level. Then you have the 618, another major level of confluence. The 702, again, another little level of confluence. Uh, 786, the last level of support here before the final drop. And then, of course, a full retracement all the way back to the end. And if we take a look at, you know, what did that look like uh, originally when Bitcoin first, you know, bottomed, or let's just take it from this area here and let's go to the bottom there. And Bitcoin rejected almost at the 0.5, now finding support basically on the 382 from this last uh, peak right here after the first drop, had a retracement, and then a drop, and then ultimately bottoming out. Uh, so a lot of different ways to look at that. Maybe we can look at from this retracement to the ultimate, this retracement to the bottom of the cycle here. Uh, hang on, let me get rid of this stuff. There we go. From this retracement to just the bottom of this initial peak right there, it puts Bitcoin right at the 382, ultimately to the bottom finding support. But here, uh, broke through it and lost it. So a couple of different ways to look at that. Uh, so that's my thinking is that 25,000 level is the next one in line uh, before we look to those next levels down in Bitcoin and of course Ethereum. Well, let's take a look at this too. So let's take a look at the weekly chart and we've been following the Gaussian channel. And one of the things that's interesting is uh, back in April of last year, Bitcoin popped up above the midline and then had this um, topping candle and then reversed after that. Um, Right now, it's rejected before it got to the top line. So it hasn't quite, it popped up a little further than this when it was in the green area. But this is the first time Bitcoin's really done this in the red area of the Gaussian channel on the weekly. Um, so right now it's reversed. The question is, will it hold that mid-level, which would be uh, by the time it gets there, it could potentially be around that 25,000 level, depending on how this level's out. The last time we saw Bitcoin reject, uh, you know, that when it was in the red on the Gaussian, it's only done it in the green where it's popped up and then went back down. The last time was 2014, uh, where Bitcoin was in the Gaussian channel, where it came up and rejected right here on the top line, kind of where we're at, but it didn't quite reach the top line. It, it pulled back. I mean, obviously that was a spike, but let's just look at this area here where it pulled back basically about 20% and then went on a run from there when it was in the red after it broke through the midline and rejected at the top line. Didn't quite make it to the top, but almost, but let's just say, what if it reversed, you know, 20% from closing there? So where does that put Bitcoin? Right at about 24,200, uh, which is kind of right in this area here of previous resistance. So the likelihood of Bitcoin coming down to test that is pretty good. And then that's gonna be your major support area right there at that 24,384. And just out of, Coincidence, let's see what FIB level that would represent on a retracement from this latest run from the bottom. Peak of that run went to the peak here. And let's see what that, right at the 382. So it would not be, un I mean, look at that, pegging the 382 just perfect on this bounce here, rejected. Came up here, rejected, and then popped up above it. So it would be very... Uh, Probable and logical for it to come down and test that 382 level, which is 25,000. Yeah, 25,068. I don't know where I was getting 24 before. That's 25,000 uh, right there. I don't know what I was looking at. Yeah, it's 25,000. So, yeah, right down in that 25,000. I was looking at closing price in the 24. So, 25,000 range, 24, you know, and change to 25. That's your next major uh, support level uh, that we're going to be watching and keeping an eye on. So what do I really think? So at this point, there's still tons of liquidity out there. The liquidity has not been sucked out of the system by the Fed, meaning the Fed's not unloading unloading the balance sheet and pulling capital out of the markets, um, you know, that are otherwise going into risk assets. You know, pension funds, hedge funds, life funds all need to generate yield. They're looking for um, places to park capital. There's just there's just so much liquidity out there. I think it's going to be difficult for markets to completely implode without another major event. The banking situation we saw was contained. It's not broad spread or systemic. Uh, there's you know, problems in the car market. There's problems in the commercial real estate market. So none of those on their own are enough to bring the economy down or bring the markets or credit markets or financial markets down. But collectively combined, 
then then you know then you've got something to talk about that the markets could potentially unwind for. You could have a, a deleveraging event that brings markets back to new lows and then uh, off from there. So I think right now the markets are going to continue to digest uh, and price in the rate cut, continue to digest and price in earnings, and then maybe consolidate until the Fed makes its move, kind of see what things look like, consolidate a little bit of sideways ranging like we've seen, but maybe at lower lower levels of that consolidation before the next leg down or up, depending on uh, how things look uh, after the Fed hikes the next time to see if anything else implodes. We've got a lot of potential um, trouble in that commercial real estate market. We've got a lot of potential trouble in the automobile market, and we got a lot of potential trouble with banks still. Under, you know, nobody really knows what's going on there. So uh, when the Fed hikes again, that's going to put even more pressure on the bank. So uh, those are the things I'm looking at. I'll see you in the next video.